गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन एच संजीव पाल फ्रॉम श्रीमती एल पी सेवनी विद्या भवन योर स्टेटिस्टिक एजुकेटर वेलकमिंग यू ऑल टू द क्लास ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिक्स ओके कंटिन्यूंग फर्दर कंटिन्यूंग द चैप्टर ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन राइट नाउ वी शैल डिस्कस फर्दर राइट कम टू योर एग्जाम्पल नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स right come to your example number 26 what the given over here see example number 26 the following results are obtained on the basis of daily wages paid to uh, the workers of two firms a and b there are two firms daily wages are uh, wages are paid to the workers and certain information have been given regarding them over here you'd find firm a and firm b is there what are the details given they have been, they have given us the number of workers of firm a and firm b number of workers of firm a and uh, firm b there is 20 for a and 30 for firm b then mean daily wages that is the average wage in rupees for firm a and firm b has been given that is rupees 250 for firm a and rupees 400 for firm b and they have given us the standard uh, division of the wages of firm a and firm b that is 10 and 12 uh, rupees uh, respectively right now what are the questions we will see what are the questions been given there are three uh, different questions over here right we'll read uh, all the three questions one after the other and then we'll see how to solve it see the first one say uh, what the given over here uh, which firm is paying more total wages okay to their workers right that is what is the total wages what is the more total wages paid by uh, the firms whether a is paying more wages or b is paying more uh, wages to its workers that we are going to see there's the total wages come to example number 2 they have told us determine which firm shows more relative uh, variation in wages okay they have told that uh, which firm is paying uh, more or showing more relative variation in wages paid to the workers and for that children we need to find out coefficient of variation for both the firm for it we have the standard deviation also we have the mean also all right and come to the third one the final one they have told us find the combined mean and combined standard deviation for the two firms we need to find out combined mean and the combined standard deviation for both the firms so now we shall see that how to actually solve it okay uh, as per the first question we'll just uh, try to find out the answer for the first question that is which firm is paying more total wages to their workers okay uh, so over here you'd find children we are having basically two different firms firm a and firm b now obviously to find out the uh, total wages okay what we need to do is that we need to uh, multiply the total uh, number of workers and the average wage that is your x bar to actually find out the total daily wages okay uh, this is for firm a so into the table okay the question that what we saw the total number of workers for firm a uh, is actually 20 and its average wage is 250 so while we talk about so the total daily wages the total daily wages uh, paid by firm a is actually rupees 5000 is actually rupees 5000 right you just multiply uh, the average wage and the total number of workers uh, that is rupees 5000 by firm a similarly if we just see to firm b okay obviously the formula will uh, remain the same so over here the total daily wages for firm b obviously n2 and x bar 2 for n2 uh, it is given into the table that it is actually say the 30 workers and x bar 2 that is you can say the average uh, wage given by firm b that is rupees 400 if we multiply them you would find it is coming actually rupees 12000 so the total daily wages uh, paid by firm b is rupees 12000 right what they given away into the sum they had given into the question which firm is paying more total wages so comparing them comparing a and b okay you would find that uh, uh, firm b is actually paying uh, more daily wages because firm a is paying rupees 5000 and firm b is paying rupees 12000 so over here you would find that uh, uh, firm b is actually uh, paying uh, more total wages because uh, firm b is paying rupees 12000 daily in comparison to firm a which is paying only rupees 
5000 right come to your second question we had seen the second question that determine which form shows more relative variation to uh, in wages paid to its workers right now we know the formula for the relative wages uh, relative variation sorry that is a coefficient of variation that it is always standard deviation it is always say a standard deviation uh, say divide by its average into 100 right uh, so that is actually your coefficient of uh, a variation and the standard deviation what they had given into the table was 10 the average given was the average wages given was 250 as you multiply it by 100 it will give you 4 percentage okay it will give you 4 percentage why it is uh, the unit is in percentage because it has been multiplied by 100 right similarly we are going to find out for firm b we are going to take the values from the table right so over here also coefficient of variation you would find your s2 divided by x bar 2 into 100 your standard deviation from the table um, the values which have been given is actually 12 and its uh, average uh, is actually 400 so divide by 400 into 100 okay will give you 3 percentage and that is actually your uh, coefficient of uh, variation for firm B right uh, what they are given over here they told us determine which firm shows more relative uh, variation in the wages okay now over here children you would find uh, for firm A it is 4 percentage as we have calculated right for firm A it is 4 percentage as we have calculated and for firm B it is actually 3 percentage as we have calculated okay the percentage uh, of uh, coefficient of variation for firm A is uh, more for firm A right the coefficient of variation in percentage is more for firm A so we can say that uh, as they have asked us that which uh, firm shows more relative variation we can say that firm A shows more relative variation so see over here see the final answer for this of a second question there is a coefficient of variation for firm A is more hence there is more variation in the daily wages of your firm A right so that is how you do uh, this second question then the third question they had given us find the combined mean and the combined standard deviation for the two firms right so we'll find out the combined mean first okay for the third question this is our third question as you will see it all right this is our third question all right and it is about uh, firstly it is about combined mean so while we talk about combined mean we know that it is our x bar c and yes as two firms are there the formula becomes say n1 x bar 1 minus n2 x bar 2 upon n1 uh, minus n2 okay but uh, it is showing a, a minus sign over here but you know while we talk about combined uh, mean it is always the addition right okay so actually it is not minus sign in between it is the addition sign right that should be the addition sign over here on into the picture you are actually finding it uh, you know it is looking like minus but it's not minus it's actually addition so in combined mean you would find as the formula goes i just told minus right but it's just uh, 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 read it okay but you would find we need to have the plus sign so over here uh, we can say that our combined mean is equal to what n1 x bar 1 plus n2 x bar 2 upon n1 plus n2 right so over here you would find you will put up again all the values from the table because we have n also and we are having uh, say mean also for both the uh, firms you will put up the values in the numerator also and the denominator use your uh, say your algebraic uh, uh, say calculations use board mass first of all you multiply them right first of all multiply them get the values over here okay uh, do the addition of the denominator also okay then do the addition of the numerator as well divide them you will get the combined mean so over here for both the firms the combined mean is coming up to rupees 340 so while we talk about say the combined mean it is coming up to rupees 340 now you know that we need to find out the combined standard deviation right now for that we want d square also all right so you know now the formula to find out uh, d1 and d2 so you would find while we talk about uh, uh, say uh, d1 right you know that it is uh, the average of the uh, first uh, firm 
minus your combined mean. So from the table itself, you will take uh, say the average for of the first firm, average wages of the first firm that is 250 minus the combined mean that we just found out above 340, you got your D1 to be minus 90. Similarly, while we talk about D2, it is your X bar 2 minus your combined mean. That is you can say 400 minus 340 that will give you what that will give you 60. So over here you got your D1 and D2. Now as we go further with the formula for our combined standard deviation right uh, you now know the formula of the combined standard uh, uh, say deviation that is your SC because it's combined standard deviation symbolically you know it is mentioned by SC right. So over here you would find your SC uh, is equal to under root N1 into bracket S1 square say it is plus again children over here it is actually uh, looking like negative sign but it's not negative sign it is addition sign. So under root N1 into bracket S1 square plus D1 square bracket over plus N2 into bracket S2 square plus D2 square whole upon N1 plus N2 right uh, we have N okay we have a uh, uh, basically standard uh, deviation given okay deviation we just found out above right all the values you are going to put up over here right then what you are going to do first of all do the square of the values okay first of all do the square of the values right then uh, deduct them and then multiply them right you will get uh, 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 this particular step then obviously we'll do the addition of it then obviously divide it do the under root of it you will get 74.3398 but you know as you write up to two decimal places our combined standard deviation would be rupees 74.34 and that is the combined uh, standard deviation so you'd find that the combined uh, uh, say standard deviation okay uh, uh, of uh, for the two firms or you can say uh, yes for the of the two firms uh, is actually rupees 74.34 here now uh, we shall see some useful results okay uh, related to uh, this chapter right as a given over here say suppose the range uh, say quartal deviation mean deviation and the standard deviation for the observations x1 x2 uh, till xn are see it has been given a range of uh, x uh, range of x is there that's why over here you would find it has been given r x uh, quartal deviation of x that is qdx and mean division of x that is mdx and standard division of x is actually sx so uh, if suppose uh, uh, say the range quartal division mean division and standard division and uh, r of x are being given okay you would find that if each observations okay that is xi is uh, actually multiplied by a non zero constant b and a constant a is added to it a new set of observations that is y1 y2 y uh, till yn is been obtained so over here children in short okay what has been given over here is that now suppose if you are having as it has been given xi over here if there is any value of xi given in the form of whether range quartile deviation mean deviation or standard deviation right you would always find a constant called b a constant called b which is multiplied by xi and a constant called a which is actually added to the value so that you will get a new set of uh, numbers that is yi you will get a new set of numbers yi right i repeat over here now suppose uh, you are having xi right on the basis of xi you want to get a uh, new values okay uh, or a new set of numbers that is yi for that it is it is multiplied by say a constant which is termed as b and a constant a is always uh, not always but is added to it so that you can get a new set of values okay in the form of yi so that is one of the important results right on the basis of that if we will uh, see to uh, this particular table okay which has been given right if we we'll see to this particular table okay uh, that is actually been given right you would find uh, say if you are having range of x that is rx 
right now if you want to find out uh, uh, say range of y that is r y what can be done is that to this r x okay uh, non zero constant b is actually multiplied okay because non zero constant is there so you would find there is modulus sign okay uh, for b why because it is a non zero constant so uh, with the value of r x if you multiply a non zero constant you will always get a uh, say a set of values okay that is actually over here as range is the range of x is given you can find out the range of y similarly uh, if you talk about say the quartile division this is the quartile division of x that is q dx now in this q dx only if we uh, if we multiply uh, say uh, a non zero constant and that is uh, uh, b we are multiplying by q dx okay with modulus again why with modulus because it's a non zero constant okay so you would get what you would get the quartile uh, division for y similarly for uh, mean division also if it has been given mean division of x okay you are multiplying it by non zero constant okay and you are getting mean division of y similarly standard deviation of x that is sx you are multiplying it by a non zero constant you are getting standard deviation for y okay similarly the variation uh, uh, variance sorry uh, variance s2 uh, uh, s2 or you can say s square right of x that you are multiplying by b square why b square because b is b as you do the square of it it itself becomes non zero okay so it's a non zero constant as you are multiplying by b square okay s square of x as you are multiplying it by b square you are getting s square or you can say variance for y all right so that is actually the result out of it right uh, so similarly over here one note is also uh, been uh, given uh, that yes uh, if uh, uh, your b is a, a positive number is greater than or equal to 0 is a positive number right obviously keeping b into the modulus it will become uh, a positive number similarly just below you would find if your b is your negative uh, number less than 0 right keeping it into the modulus obviously it will turn it into a positive one right so that is one of the important results okay now uh, to discuss the above result all right uh, we are going to see only uh, two such different sums okay related to the above result then we are going to wrap up uh, this chapter all right come to your example number 28 all right what has been given the range quartile deviation mean deviation and standard deviation for a, a variable x are 10 2 3 and 5 respectively <coughs> excuse me respectively if y is equal to 5x plus 3 find the range quartile deviation uh, mean deviation and say standard deviation for the variable y now over you children uh, they have given you the values of uh, range of x that is 10 uh, uh, say quartile uh, deviation of x is 2 mean deviation of x is 3 and they have told us say uh, standard deviation of x is 5 right now as we saw the table above of uh, uh, say important result okay as we have uh, seen the table on the basis of that basically this sums uh, this sum has been done right so you would find over here children that uh, uh, to find out the range of y the range of x has been multiplied by non zero constant uh, non zero constant that is 5 right so that is 5 multiplied by 10 so the range of y is 5 0 50 5 tens are 50 similarly quartile deviation of y we can find out that with the quartile deviation you have multiplied say a non zero constant 5 which is uh, been given so your quartile deviation for x was 2 right 2 you have multiplied by 5 it gives us 10 so quartile deviation of y is 10 similarly mean division the mean division of x uh, was actually 3 you have multiplied by a non zero constant that is 5 right so it gives us 5 3 is 15 right it gives us 5 3 is 15 similarly the standard deviation for y okay the standard deviation of x was 5 okay you just multiplied by a non zero uh, constant that is 5 it gave us 5 5 is 25 right so in short that uh, they had given us uh, say the range quartile division mean division and standard deviation of y we have multiplied by non zero constant that is 5 and we got range quartile division mean division and standard division of y 
so that is how this important results could be used right come to your example number 29 and the last sum of this uh, chapter okay to discuss okay so what are given the demand function of a commodity is d this is the demand function that is 15 minus 2 p and what is p p is the price actually so where p is the price which is in rupees say per unit and demand is in units what they given from the closing price of each month of the last year say it is known that for the price range is rupees 5 uh, so uh, say the uh, range for the price is actually rupees 5 mean division for the price is rupees 2 and say variance okay of the price is rupees uh, say 9 and it should be in square because variance you know it is actually standard deviation square so its unit will be that is rupees would be in square okay reading further what they given find the range mean deviation and the variance of the demand from it so from the demand we need to find out uh, say from uh, fr uh, we need to find out actually the range mean division and the variance of the demand actually from the price we need to find out the demand of actually uh, the range mean division and the variance okay so range of price okay has been given is rupees 5 is rupees 5 then uh, mean division of price is let's uh, say 2 rupees and the variance of a price is 9 rupees square right so how now we are going to find out over here you would find as uh, see this one minus 2p okay now what is there uh, uh, with p it uh, it is actually minus 2 it is a coefficient for it right okay and if we make it as a non zero constant okay and as we keep it into the modulus it will become 2 right so what will happen over here just see to it say range of demand okay range of demand rd okay is going to be equal to say your into modulus minus 2 into r of p that is price right uh, now uh, keeping minus 2 into modulus it becomes 2 right and uh, range of price is 5 so as you multiply it you get the range of demand that is rd and that is actually 2 5 is the 10 units similarly mean division okay uh, of demand how we can find out okay we'll multiply mean division of price with the non-zero constant that is true mean division of price was minus 2 and uh, say the non-zero constant is actually 2 so as we multiply 2 and 2 2 to the 4 the mean division of the demand gives us 4 units similarly they have told us to find out the variance also that is you can say a square right a square of demand right so you would find uh, we also need to multiply the square of non zero constant so it would be to find out the s square or variance of the demand you would find it is uh, say square of minus 2 multiplied by uh, say uh, your uh, 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 the standard uh, the square of standard division of price so uh, as you do the square of minus 2 it will be 4 right and uh, the variance of price is given 9 so 4 nines are 36 right your answer for this is 4 nines are 36 units square okay it is actually uh, say the variance okay of demand which is in units that is 36 units right units square right so this is how uh, we have done short sums okay related to important results so here children we just wrap up our this chapter of uh, 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 this chapter and this is how we uh, wrap up the concept of uh, a standard deviation right uh, so we end our video over here and next time we'll just uh, uh, just uh, see the next chapter so i'm ending the video over here god bless you all and study hard